Hello everyone! Today's the day that marks the one-year anniversary of when we finally made it clear to everyone what a Velociraptor is, rather than one of those strange monstrosities from Jurassic Park, which no one calls Velociraptors anymore. Hooray! We did it! <laughs> Go team! Wait. What? No. No, you're right. Oh, God. See, the thing is, is that Velociraptor is a kind of animal that is defined as a morphological species. Now, what that means is we obviously don't know which skeletons reproduced with which because they're dead. They are skeletons. So we define different extinct animals based on their morphology. Now, that's iffy, but it's all paleontologists have, as my friend John likes to say every time. I criticize the morphological species concept. Anyway, all of them are bullshit. The idea of a species is made up. Anyway, so a velociraptor is specifically defined by a suite of characteristics that were named the first time a velociraptor was discovered. As such, you can't just call whatever the fuck you want a velociraptor. And those things in Jurassic Park are not velociraptors. You can call them raptors. Raptors aren't defined by any species concept. I don't give a shit. Call them Jurassic Park raptors. That's fine with me. This isn't about accuracy, this is just about how, you know, names mean things! That's why things have names! Now let's go through the series of characteristics that scientists use to distinguish Velociraptor from other similar dinosaurs, utilizing the lovely skeletal provided by Scott Hardman. Thank you, Scott! The supratemporal fossa and fenestra are subcircular, bound by laterally convex supratemporal arcade. The frontal bone is long, almost four times longer than wide across the orbital portion, and almost four times as long as the parietal bone. The anterior border of the internal and orbital fenestra is broadly rounded. The maxillary fenestra is not located in a caudally open depression. The premaxilla has a long maxillary process reaching well beyond the caudal margin of the external nares. The dentary is very shallow, its depth only about one eighth to one seventh of its length, with the ventral margin convex, aka the dentary is relatively deeper and with straight ventral margin than in other dromaeosaurids. First and second premaxillary teeth are larger than the third and fourth. The lateral wall of the brain case possesses a deep prudic recess. It has a V-shaped furcula with reduced and asymmetrically developed hypocleidium. It has a flange-like M. ambience turbicle located proximally on the anterior face of the pubis. It has a well-developed anterior turbosity proximally located on the ischium, and it has a rounded longitudinal ischial ridge. Now if that all sounded like gibberish to you, that's okay because you're probably not an anatomist and those are the people who really need to know about that stuff, so you just need to know that these are characteristics that an animal must have in order to be a velociraptor. Yay, science! For you, the layperson, it's enough to know that a velociraptor has kind of a rounded tip of the snout, it's very small and has a very long, rigid tail, it has thin legs with sharp, sickle claws on them, and oh yeah, there's fossil evidence that shows that, pretty, that velociraptor definitely had complex feathers. So add them all together, and this is the general morphology of a velociraptor. The colors are up for debate, but this general feathers and body shape, that's velociraptor. This giant lizard thing with a whip-like tail and a boxy skull that's really huge is not a velociraptor. Okay, so now that we know what a velociraptor is, why the hell are the raptors in the Jurassic Park movie called velociraptors? They obviously look nothing like the small pointy floofs. Well, here's the thing. Back when Michael Crichton was writing his novel, he wanted to have a larger raptor than Velociraptor because Velociraptors aren't really that threatening to people. And so he used works by Gregory S. Paul as his references. Now, Greg Paul really liked to lump things. Now, he's a very influential scientist. Please do not get me wrong here. He's very important for the field of paleontology. But Greg Paul liked to lump lots of species into the same genus. And whether or not that's okay, Deinonychus and Velociraptor Velociraptor are separated by millions of years and look completely different from one another, and yet he decided that Deinonychus is a species of Velociraptor, even though it's significantly bigger and has a di bigger head. Or a different head. Anyway, so because of this, Michael Crichton based his raptors in his book off of Deinonychus, but called them Velociraptor? 
So there you go with that. Plus, Velociraptor's a cooler name, but that's not a reason to do things. Anyway, so then when the movie was being made, there were rumors of an even larger raptor than Deinonychus being unearthed in Utah. And so that's what Steven Spielberg based his raptors on. And those raptors are now known as Utah Raptor. But, you know, he still called them Velociraptor. And so that's where we're at today. But you really shouldn't call the Velociraptors in Jurassic Park Velociraptors. I just did it myself because it's so easy to do. But here's the thing, they're not Velociraptors. They don't have that suite of morphological characteristics by which we define Velociraptor. It, it's not even about feathers. It's not. We defined the bones of Velociraptor before we knew that Velociraptor had feathers. And just because now we know that it had feathers doesn't mean that it was any more correct in 1993. So please, please stop calling the raptors in Jurassic Park Velociraptor. Just call them raptors and make everyone's lives easier because here's the thing, science has definitions for a reason. You can't just use random words that sound cool to mean whatever the fuck you want. I'm looking at you! Uh, Avengers, the first one, where they use the word tesseract to mean some weird interdimensional portal, when in fact a tesseract is a four-dimensional cube. That's what a tesseract is. It has an actual meaning in science. And, like, people keep making up words, like, people use the term photon gun in something. I forget what it was. Science has terms, and they mean things for a reason, and you have to respect that, okay? You wouldn't call a tiger a lion. That's wrong, and that's what you're doing when you call the Jurassic Park raptors Velociraptor. So happy Velociraptor Awareness Day. I'm really hoping we can keep this train going and make more people aware. Please stop the madness. Stop calling the Jurassic Park Velocirap Velociraptors. Please stop calling the Velociraptors. Thank you. This has been another PSA.